10% above our normal volume over the past number of days. We're down to about 10% above our normal volume. Um, and uh, one thing in particular we should talk about is carbon monoxide. So in the last 24 hours, Toronto EMS paramedics have not transported one patient related to carbon monoxide poisoning. And there's a couple of reasons for the volume change and the carbon monoxide piece. I think the first thing is the great work of Mr. Haynes Cruz and Toronto Hydro out there. And the second thing is uh, your messaging that you're getting out for us. So the media's message has been very strong on the carbon monoxide piece. We appreciate that and I encourage you to uh, continue to uh, get that out there. And finally, I would just like to say, again, thank you very much to my staff who are doing an excellent job and I'm happy to take any of your questions. What were the uh, majority of calls for that Toronto EMS had to respond to over the last few days in relation to, let's say, the ice storm? Sure. So, um, uh, again, as I had said yesterday, things like uh, cardiovascular disease, breathing problems, diabetic problems, of course, things related to ice, slips, trips, and falls, increase in uh, car accidents, and again, we had an increase in our carbon monoxide calls. The mayor said there's been no serious sort of serious, super serious injuries from this storm. Can you, can you talk about that and elaborate? So we don't have, um, in terms of uh, injuries specifically related to the storm, I'm not aware of any fatalities specifically related to the storm. Of course, there's been an impact where people have fallen and broken hips and bones and those types of things. The way that the, the storm has been protracted over a period of days, obviously that causes a lot of stress for uh, the elderly and frail population and again that brings out some of these medical problems and that increases our call volume. So there's no question that the storm has had an impact on uh, people's health uh, related to the number of calls that we would go to. Uh, but we are not aware of any electrocutions or those types of things related to downed uh, hydro lines. Can you talk about the challenges for paramedics in terms of doing your job in a situation like a power outage with injured buildings where there's you know, no elevator service and residents you know, have called the MS and you know, many flights of stairs. There's, you yeah. know, I'm sure challenges it poses in terms of doing your job well and quickly. You bet. I mean, I couldn't be more proud of, of our staff. You can imagine the challenges of, first of all, getting through the weather, arriving at uh, uh, an apartment building, and on the 26th floor, there's a patient up there in need of your help. The paramedics, along with our colleague, Chief Sales' staff and, and Chief Bill Blair, uh, helping the paramedics carry the medical equipment up 25 sets of, of uh, stairs, treating the patient, and then carrying the patient back down those 25 stairs to get them to the hospital uh, as quickly as possible. Lots of challenges out there, but again, uh, the cooperation has been fantastic. All of my colleagues, everybody has pitched in to make sure that we've done an excellent job. We're doing everything that we can. And again, we're gonna be here 24 seven until this is completely resolved. Uh, and our people will be on the street taking care of Toronto. How do you feel like taking down 25 Do you have some sort of a weight structure? Just throw them over your shoulder? Yeah. We definitely don't throw them over our shoulder. Uh, we have specialized equipment. We have a piece of equipment called a stair chair that has, um, they look like, um, like uh, tank tracks on it. So you would carry this specialized chair up to the top of the, uh, you know, the 25 floors. And then when you get the patient on there, it actually rolls down the stairs with the assistance of um, paramedics, firefighters, police officers uh, to get the patient down. Um, there are other things that the patient obviously has to be on a stretcher, has to be in a, a laying position. We have other pieces of specialized equipment to do that as well.